The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take it or leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. Warning! This video has lore. If you don't want to deal with three minutes of intro, go here. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because I know you want me to, and I don't know who you are, but I don't trust you. Aw, don't do me like that. I'm a very trustworthy person. How can I know for sure, though? Because I can do a lot of things on this ship, and you don't really have a choice otherwise. You know, that doesn't particularly give a vote of confidence. Look, what are you afraid of exactly? I'm sure, but you're obviously plotting something, since you really want me to look through these. Gee, for someone who argues a ton, you sure are bad at it, aren't ya? Look, humor me a bit. Just this once, open up the nearest one to you, and look at it. Just read it aloud. Alright, fine. Alright, Sector J, region number 35363462, utility entertainer, particularly affectionate towards other members of the vessel and other universes, however has a significant decreased interest in individuals from her own, has a theme centered around belly dance, <sighs> wait, this is just Jasmine, isn't it? Correct. Orion means herself. Just a heads up, there's not a whole lot in her files that isn't just her obsession with shipping and countless crushes. Uh, huh. <laughs> there's actually a really humorous story in there where she tried picking up gaming and became a boob streamer before joining the ship. <laughs> Super out of her element, tried getting into such a big market in our universe. Her world in particular is very open to that kind of thing, you know? It was magical. Uh huh. Well, I fail to see the humor in it myself, but. I guess you just enjoy tragedy like that, I guess. I don't know. I mean, a lot of entertainment is based in tragedy. Uh, regardless, Jasmine and I were never really that close, though. I mean, I wouldn't even know what she would be up to right about now. So, why are we down here, Jazz? I was asked by the stick in the mud in her throne room to take care of the characters today. Oh. Then why are we here? Wait, you're here because I wanted a cutie to hang around today, and Tabby here hasn't been able to see her partner in a while and misses her. Why? Is there a reason you seem spooked, Dee? Oh, little Double D here is probably just as anxious as she normally is because she's around all these characters she doesn't know. Am I that easy to read? Team Blunt? Yeah, you're not really that subtle. Now, if only you were as easy to get into bed with. I mean... What? All right, with that said, I'll be seeing you dames later. I gotta split to find Widget. Oh, that's fine. You can leave the two of us alone together. Please don't leave me with her. Aw, guess I'm being left alone then. Fine, I can go mingle with the characters on my own. So the ones upstairs should be checking on us soon. You gonna hide out like you always do? I'm uncertain of who even is showing up today. Hey, so you must be Lizzie's extras, right? That we are. Thanks for noticing. Hmm... You know, you're kind of cute. I don't know if I'm into you, though. But you... You look kind of familiar. Do I know you? Um, I don't think so? Hmm... Okay, well, I was told to give you guys a package, so here you go. Oh, looks like a video. Because of course it's a video. Anyway, Tata, you have a good one. I gotta go back to my group of gal pals to get them out of trouble and get into a different kind of trouble. Well, that was weird. I've heard about her. She's got this very weird, borderline self-cessed fetish with other people on this ship. It's very meh. Is it really self-cessed when everyone on the ship are essentially totally different? I don't know. And honestly, I don't think I want to know. Well, I'm gonna sit down and, uh, watch this gift that has been stowed upon us. Uh, you gonna be okay on your own? Yeah, I think I've got things to pass the time with myself. I will see you later. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Tom4472, a commentator whose channel consists of primarily re-uploads with a couple of attempts at making his own commentaries here and there. Now, I don't normally like getting political, but here we are. Recently, he did a commentary on our very own YouTube dude who, before his channel got rudely deleted off the site, did a commentary on YouTube ranter Grade A Under A talking about the 2016 presidential election because God knows talking about years old things has been what 2019 Doodlecoms has almost exclusively been about. Outside of that, that's literally all the context that's really needed to follow along with this video. We're just gonna go ahead and jump right in, but before we do, I'm gonna be skipping Tom's intro skit as one, it's pretty long. Not that that's a problem. Hell, mine was pretty long in just this video. But two, I'm also going to be covering a lot of production points in this commentary, as is, and I don't want to waste everything I want to say on just the first two minutes alone. And three, I 
don't even know where I would begin with that intro skit anyway. So, I'm gonna just skip over it. I'd also like to take note that there's unfortunately gonna be very long periods of context in this video. Unfortunately, there's not much I can do without speeding it up to the point of incomprehensibility, so... Sorry, you're just gonna have to kind of deal with minute-long chunks of context at a time. Let's begin. What is up, everybody? Tom447 here, and today is another commentary. So today's target is a user by the name of YouTube Dude 2 who did a commentary on Grey Day. Now to give you a quick backstory to who both those people are, Grey Day is kind of a rant. I've kind of did, like, defended him in a previous video. I think it was on a by the name of Secret 44 Productions. He was a... he's a ranter, so that's all you need to know. His most popular video is something about him saying about something he hates about school. All that should be appearing here. So, alright. You know how I said I was going to be covering a lot of production issues? Yeah, this is a pretty reoccurring one throughout this video. I'm not sure under what conditions you record under Tom, but the quiet and mumbly nature of how you speak becomes quite hard to understand at some points throughout the video. And when stuff you say starts getting lost in translation, well, whatever point you're trying to make won't land. Generally, it's just a good idea to be better audible and all you'd have to do is speak up a bit. Keep this bit in mind because it will be important later on, okay? Okay. Congratulations, America! You've just gone through 18 months of presidential pregnancy. And guess what? On November the 8th, election day, you are finally about to give birth! Oh, the excitement, man! Will it be a boy? Will it be a girl? Well, what the fuck do you care, America? You're screwed either way! Oh, I love this opening statement because literally the next video he releases after a whopping four days from this one talks about Trump winning, going like, I hope Donald Trump does a good job at being president. I mean, you're all getting screwed either way. <laughs> well, now, yeah, thanks for wishing us luck, governor. Should have saved some for yourself. I assume my viewer base is aware of who Grade A Underay is and how his reputation as well as his motivation for making videos self-destructed sometime in early 2017. You gotta be kidding me. Dude, you were doing so well. You had to, you, were, you were on a good start. Why'd you have to ruin it by saying, I assume, your assumption could be wrong. Not everyone's gonna know who he is. Just give a quick explanation saying, his most popular video is this, or some, this is another video that he's done that's kind of got him under the radar. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but is your point really just don't presume your audience knows who you're coming? Covering. I mean, if it is, sure, that's not like the worst point you could make in a vacuum, as if I were just to start a video immediately covering an individual, it does help to know who we're discussing during the video, but not only did YouTube start with Grade A's video, giving us a cold opening sample as to who he is and allowing his audience to come to some sort of clue as to what kind of content he does, but immediately following that, YouTube Dude also gives a brief history of how he felt about Grade A's work and during the segment drops some hints as to what Grade A was known for overall, being his videos on Keemstar. But I myself was very late on coming into that scene as I did like Grade's content for longer than most people did. However, I too had a breaking point and it wasn't with his Keemstar videos. No, I didn't mind them that much. Rather, his political videos were my breaking point. Not video, videos. He made five of these bad boys. Now, to be fair, all of them varied in quality. The Hillary and Trump videos were alright, the last one was mediocre, and the first one is pretty shit, but this was the one where everything stopped clicking for me with Grade's content. Let's figure out why. Like, yeah, that still doesn't fully explain that Grade A is a YouTube ranter, but with everything else YouTube Dude does explain, it's not really needed to follow along with the discussion. Whee! Back in 2004, right? Democrat Howard Dean's presidential run was ended because he ended a speech with a little enthusiastic scream. And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House! Ah! Did you hear that little scream, right? That... Ah! Yeah, that ended his presidential campaign. Fuck how good of a politician you might be, right? That scream is more important than anything else. Oh, listen, what happened was, right? News reporters heard that scream and reported it as being unpresidential, and the brainless sheep public just agreed with it somehow. Unpresidential. Listen, that makes no fucking sense, right? Because if that little scream is unpresidential, if you fast forward 12 years to today, Americans now have to choose between such presidential behaviors as Donald Trump tweeting at comedians calling them pussies and Hillary Clinton pissing herself. Okay, before I actually get into the point here, love that little text you snuck at the bottom there. Lol, this picture is fake, by the way, but I kept it in because old people having accidents is funny, and she won four, so fuck her. God damn, you'd have to have a magnifying glass to realize that this evidence was bullshit. Literally. That aside, I decided to look into this whole Howard Dean fiasco. According to a news outlet called Esquire, it is true that the Dean scream had its effect, but that wasn't the only factor that ended Howard's campaign. Howard's campaign lacked organization. His numbers were not holding up whatsoever. He fought with another person running the presidential race, which is a strategy that takes both parties involved down. Hell, before the Iowa caucus, he was barely in the lead and was clearly unraveling. And even if the Dean scream was the result of Howard's doom, do you think maybe people learned from that and realized it was stupid to follow the words of CNN, who have been notorious long before your video came into fruition for providing fake 
news. I mean, considering Donald Trump, a person who was accused of way more unpresidential shit than Howard Dean, ended up being one of the two possible candidates you could vote for in this race, I wouldn't doubt it. In general, people nowadays are incredibly skeptical towards news outlets that force a political agenda rather than provide accurate journalism. Hell, Howard Dean himself laughed about the situation he was in by reciting the speech the screen came from in a recent 2016 event. TLDR, this shit is false and outdated. Oh, right. I guess this needs addressing too. So Tom's little alien creature here was just for the intro skit primarily. Otherwise, he makes like three appearances throughout the video despite its shorter 14 minute length. And he's honestly the worst part of this video. Going back to the aforementioned problem with your quiet and mumbly tone making you difficult to understand, we now also have a filter that jumbles what you're saying even more so. I don't want to say it's inherently the pitch that's the problem, as I know it's probably not, but the way that it was pitched definitely lowers the quality of your already problematic audio, making it near impossible to understand what your little alien creature is supposed to be even saying at any given point. Enunciating becomes way more vital when you're playing with a filter like this, trust me. But now on to the point that you were making that I had to spend a while trying to decipher. So, if I understood correctly, your point was that YouTube Dude's wording indicates that he agrees with Grade A's point despite it being wrong, and that his screenshots somehow prove his agreement as invalid regardless. And presuming this is what you meant, as it is pretty unclear, no, that's not what YouTube Dude was doing. Grady's point was bringing up how the Howard Dean screen was the thing that ended up his presidential campaign due to its seeming unprofessional, and then tied that into how Trump and Hillary should have had their campaigns ended because they too seemed terribly unprofessional. And YouTube Dude's point was how the Howard Dean screen wasn't the only thing that ended his presidential campaign, but had it done so, the Dean incident was 12 years ago, and since then, news outlets are seen as less credible during the campaign races. YouTube Dude was not agreeing with Gray here by any sense of the imagination as indicated by him starting his point by saying that it wasn't the only thing that ended his campaign. That aside, I decided to look into this whole Howard Dean fiasco. According to a news outlet called Esquire, it is true that the Dean scream had its effect, but that wasn't the only factor that ended Howard's campaign. The only thing that YouTube did that wasn't blatant disagreement to Grade A's point was giving him a little bit of leeway in saying that the screen had some form of impact before he went on to clarify that there was more to it than that. As for a screenshot shooting him in the foot, how? Unlike the previous screenshots where he was talking about Grade's keen video yet showing the everything wrong with YouTube duology, you don't explain the problem with the screenshots here, you just say that they shoot his argument in the foot after demonstrating that you don't even understand what his argument even is. I ain't just gonna take your word on it, please provide evidence. Part one, and this should be rule number two. Anyone who got to where they are today due to knowing someone influential, fuck them. Listen, they got to where they are because they had the unfair advantage of having influential people help them out, and that's bad. And if you don't believe me that that's bad, right? You clearly don't remember this guy. George Bush Sr. was president, right? And his fucking son, as luck would have it, right? Also became president. And we all know how badly that turned out, don't we? That's what happens when someone who's in the position that they're in because of knowing someone influential gets presidency. And guess what, mate? Both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton fall into these categories. Listen, it could be argued that Donald Trump wouldn't be where he is today if it weren't for his multi-millionaire dad. So fuck him. And also, right? Hillary Clinton wouldn't be where she is today if it weren't for the guy that she was fucking, or rather wasn't fucking, from the way things turned out, being a former president of the United States. She knew someone influential as well, right? So fuck her too. Listen, they did not rise to the top from the positions that they're at right now on their merits, right? They had an easy ride to the top because of their influential connections. If they didn't have the influential connections they did, right? She would still be a random lawyer helping child rapists avoid jail, and he would still be a leathery old man with an ugly wig. Stop. I think we should take a look at how these people got into power in the first place. Donald Trump, sure, got to start with the small loan of a million dollars, but... It could also be argued that Donald Trump showed good reliability and management skills when he did end up paying back that loan with interest. But no, he knew someone influential, so I guess that means he took the easy route to the top, right? As for Hillary, she did have recognition before she became Bill Clinton's presidential fuck buddy, like being the first lady of Arkansas, working on Jimmy Carter's campaign, and was one of the 100 most powerful lawyers in the US according to the National Law Journal. But nah, Bill Clinton did all the work for her. Okay. Also, who's to say George W. Bush got to where he was because of his father? According to the government website, George H. W. Bush was actually surprised to see his son interested in politics, and I don't see anything saying that he was responsible for his son becoming the governor of Texas, then moving into the White House. Sure, powerful people definitely helped these candidates to get where they were, but they weren't how they got to where they were. Now, a good example of a president that did get into the position he was in solely because of someone influential was John Quincy Adams, the son of John Adams who was groomed to be president according to the same government source. 
However, according to sources outside of the government website, he was actually considered to be ahead of his time to the point where the government got in the way of a lot of stuff he wanted to do, and even then he was still responsible for the Monroe Doctrine, a legendary piece of American legislature. And even after his term was over, his impact kept expanding as he fought for the rights of black people under slavery. But oh wait, if Gray mentions John Quincy Adams, his point would be bullshit, and we wouldn't want that, now would we? Okay buddy, you seriously don't really want to rate Pink Grid as a bad picture, don't you? Dude, how do we know he just didn't miss something in his research? Like, it can happen, you can make a mistake in a video, it's not the end of the world. I know you're not saying that for sure, but it definitely comes off like that. Literally how? Because of that little tidbit at the end where YouTube dude brings up how great bringing up John Q. Adams would have invalidated his point? Oh no, snarky pot shots, the horror. <laughs> When the promotion is around the corner, everyone will stay those extra hours at the office to look good to the boss. But you should be looking at who stayed extra hours when it didn't matter by looking at their pasts. And judging from their pasts, Donald Trump is not your fucking guy, and neither is Hillary Clinton your girl. But do you know who was? Bernie Sanders. Oh god, here we go. Bernie Sanders filibustered for over eight fucking hours back in 2010 because he was against extending the Bush tax cuts for the rich. We get it, grade. Bernie Sanders has supported gay marriage for fucking decades. We get it, grade. And Bernie Sanders was fighting for equal rights for black people. We get it, grade. Bernie fucking Sanders. Holy shit, how many times do I have to say we get it? Yes, grade. Quite frankly, he should have been one of the two we could have voted for. He would have beaten Donald Trump easily. However, he's not because Hillary fucked him over. What are we supposed to do about that? Better question, what relevance does Bernie's specific doings add other than an example for something you've already conveyed enough during the parts I skipped? Why should we know this for the presidential election if he isn't even a candidate? Here's an idea. Stop dragging out your video with this pointless bullshit and focus more on the stuff that's actually relevant. Tom? Tom? Yeah. You, you there, buddy? Did you forget to cut this part of the video knowing that you weren't gonna respond to it? Or are you gonna, like, say something? This is like a whole minute of uncut yet still sped up context that's just left there needlessly. That is unless you were planning to shoot your very next point down because that's what happens after this point. But similar to Bernie Sanders, right? Do you know who else has a long history of activism and going out of their way to help people and make a positive change and even has a bunch of awards for doing so? In my opinion, Green Party candidate Dr. Jill Stein. Listen, go on Wikipedia and read up on her, right? Not only does she seem pretty fucking decent, right? But she seems a shitload better than Trump and Clinton. You cannot be serious right now. Okay, so you go on this entire spiel about Bernie Sanders and all the wonderful things he's done, right? Even though he's not in the presidential race anymore. However, when you do get to someone who is in the presidential race, like Dr. Jill Stein, you just go like, yeah, look her up on Wikipedia, there's some good shit. Why? I mean, perhaps you were trying to save for time, but not only does that not excuse you from not bringing up at least a couple of examples, but you could have just cut out the Bernie Sanders part and all you would have lost is a slight comparison. Actually, no, you could have just mentioned Bernie Sanders in passing, and then go more in depth with Jill Stein. Didn't you say this at the beginning of the video, saying that you assume the audience knows who he is, and yet you could have done that yourself? I assume my viewer base is aware of who Grade A Under A is, and how his reputation as well as his motivation for making videos self-destructed sometime in early 2017. Hmm, do I sense a double standard here? No! And the hilarity of this following parts that strengthen YouTube Dude's point completely escapes you. I guess. Okay, let me explain. So first of all, let's tackle that last bit there of you talking about YouTube Dude's point of presuming his audience knows who Grade A is. Never mind the aforementioned fact that he gives hints as to who Grade is to his audience by explaining the history with his Keemstar videos and the political videos, YouTube Dude has also been covering Grade this entire time. So even had his audience not formally been aware of who Grade is, watching the video, especially up to this point, would give his audience some inclination as to the type of content Grey may be typically known for. His whole video is a sample of Grade's work at the end of the day, just with him interjecting to explain the problems he personally has with it. So even if you wanted to say that YouTube Dude didn't explain in depth as to who Grade A is, there's no double standards here, as you can still understand who Grade A is by watching YouTube Dude's video at the very least. Whereas we have no idea as to who Jill Stein is by merely watching Grade's video. But let's cover the why of YouTube Dude's point, as this also invalidates your claim towards double standards and plays into a lot of that minute of uncovered context that you probably unintentionally left in. Grade had spoken in depth about someone who was not in the presidential race at the time, someone who was not in running anymore but only briefly went over the candidate he thought could have been as good as Bernie who was still in the race, meaning there was much more screen time for useless information that we could do nothing about at the time for a video trying to sell us, the viewers, on the idea for voting for Stein. That's a 
fairly detrimental to his cause, especially since bringing up Bernie to begin with amounted to really nothing over a loose comparison at best. This is important, because going back to your idea of double standards, even if hypothetically speaking, YouTube dude's lack of explanation as to who Braid is was somehow a bigger issue, the intent and reason behind the need of explanation here are totally different, and thus wouldn't inherently be double standards regardless, because who Great is wouldn't be intrinsically as important to YouTube Dude's video as who Jill is to Great's. As who Great is would only tell you the backstory of the person being covered and could be taken out for the sake of strictly addressing arguments that someone had said. Whereas Jill is important to Great's video as he's trying to sell us on the idea that we should vote for her, or at the very least put some consideration to who she is when we vote. No matter how you slice this, it's not double standards, and I've never seen a usage of a term this misplaced before. Since the video is basically over, I'll just give my final thoughts. Grade, we're both poorly drawn stick figures. That's cool, but this video is a train wreck. You went on irrelevant tangents, contradicted yourself, and didn't really bother to show that much research on a lot of your claims. But that's not even the tip of the iceberg. This video is so much of a train wreck that you didn't even release it on time. You released it while the election was going, probably while everyone was waiting in line outside to vote. Hell, some people may have already cast their ballot through the mail at the time of your video's release. Yet here you were, and you were even aware of this while editing your video by putting in this text joke, and yet you still released it thinking it would do anything. He has a the desk, and you know what our line ends? Go and read the first bit of text at the beginning of the intro. Then you'll see something there. Yeah, there's something real important that you might want to read. But that doesn't change anything. Regardless of whether or not Braid fell asleep and wound up releasing this video late, it doesn't change the fact that the video was still released too late and wouldn't help anyone who would have already had the ability to cast their votes at their time of release. God. And after this point, you go on to your final thoughts. I don't really feel like covering them because it'd essentially be me asking literally where for about a minute as you list off the problems you had with the YouTube Dudes video. So we're skipping to mine instead. I really have to wonder if you at all paid any attention to YouTube Dude's video. Just about every major point that you had tried to cover soared over your head so immaculately it was like you were arguing with an off-computer monitor. So outside of the production critiques of just speak up a bit and try to be clear with how you deliver your points, and just beating you over the head with a sign that reads, listen, I don't know what else to tell you. That said, I do hope you enjoyed, and have a good day. Take care. And now I'm done. I don't know what else to do. I wonder where Elizabeth is. So, wait, how am I supposed to get out of here using these files as a reference? There's like, maps hidden in different files throughout the maze that are restocked anytime one of the admins winds up getting lost in there. What about the others? Oh, they're not actually allowed in the archives. Technically, you're trespassing right now. Only the admins actually have any access to where you're at. Wait, then how did we get here? Are you an admin? Oh, I'm a lot of things, darling. Not that you need to know anything about that. After all, explaining everything ruins the magic. Just feel free to find your way out, and we'll meet up at the end. Alright, that's another commentary down. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, you can hit that subscribe button, and then hit that other subscribe button that's in the shape of a bell. If you'd like to support me, there's a Patreon and a Ko-fi link down in the description below. You can also follow me over on Twitch and subscribe to me there, because uh, that can also support me a little bit, because God knows I don't get paid nearly enough to do this. I've got a bunch of upcoming projects with maybe 272 on the way, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys then. Take care.